Welcome in to Drew's Daily Diamond for Friday, September 6, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. We got NFL, college football, Major League Baseball all coming your way on Friday night's lights edition. Let me know in the comments below what your MLB picks are, what your college football picks are, what your NFL picks are for this weekend. All is welcome, guys. I'll be in there time in in the comments below smash that like button if you're liking the content as we got first game up nfl heading to latin america south america san paulo brazil corinthians arena to be exact it's the green bay packers and the philadelphia eagles 8 20 eastern start time here 49 and a hook being the total we are seeing fly eagles fly minus two point favorites at home this is a packers team that played great down the stretch. I mean, Jordan Love himself, uh, he was slinging it all around. This is an offense that scored 33-plus points in three of their last five games. So they came on uh, pretty well of late, and they're up against the Philly team that started off last year 10-1 and one, and then fell off, particularly with their defense. Um, they ended up losing by 20-plus points in the wild card round after starting a season, you know, winning 10 of their first 11 uh, they also lost their center, Jason Kelsey, to retirement. I am kind of a, a handicapper that looks at centers, you know, the kind of the quarterback of the offensive line. I think it's a very important position, underrated in the betting markets at times. So I think they could struggle out of the gate. We're getting the hotter team, at least in the regular season, for the Green Bay Packers. Hey, I think it's a little wrong team favored here, guys. We're going on the Packers, heading down to Brazil and put the two points in our pocket. Also like the Packers on the money line, but for record-keeping purposes, it is Green Bay plus two to lead us off Friday night lights in the NFL. We got two college football games as well. One going in the hour before 7 p.m. Eastern start time, nationally televised game here. SMU hosting BYU. We are seeing SMU, the Mustangs, minus 11 in the hook as the home favorite. 55 and a half being the total. This is a BYU team that last year, I mean, their offense was not very good. Actually, almost bottom 10 in all of college football and rushing offense. And it's a team that only got eight transfers in the offseason. You know, in today's college football, you kind of got to be going out and, and getting some, some more talented players uh, in the transfer portal. BYU didn't do that too much. So I'm a little tepid to be on the Cougars, at least out the gate this season. SMU, we saw them in week zero, you know, kind of a singled out late night nightcap against Nevada. They went on the road to Reno, to Reno, Nevada, and did not look good against the University of Nevada. But I almost think it could kind of set them up for, you know, power ratings, a lot of people being down on them. Um, at least the way that's the way I'm kind of handicapping this. They came back in week one, their second game. They're 2-0 and right now and really stomped the FCS opponent. Their head coach, Rhett Lashley, he's a Gus Malzahn disciple. That's how he came up in the coaching ranks. And one thing I'll tell you about like th this type of coach, when they get it, their opponent down, they'll really run up the score. And it, it almost shows in – it does show – in his statistics, I mean, last year he was 6-0 and at home, 5-1 and against the spread at home. And also, this is even more important, 7-0 and against the spread, the last seven non-conference home games when they were the favorite. Meaning, you know, they're playing out of conference against a team they're favored against, and they're, they're, they're winning by more than the odds makers are kind of pricing them at. They're a top 15 team in total defense and offense last year. And they returned 15 starters across the board. Their quarterback room, this is something I like, this type of profile. They get they, they have a highly rated quarterback in Preston Stone. And he's kind of being pushed to the limit by uh, the other quarterback, Jennings. I like that, particularly when you're favored, because you're likely going to be throwing the ball around with both of them. Um, and SMU's at home. You know, talking about them struggling against Nevada. Well, they're home here, and it's a fast track, field turf. They got a lot of speed on offense. I think that helps them out a lot. So overall, guys, I know a lot of people like in BYU looking towards the dog on Friday Night Lights. I don't see it, though. I think SMU kind of takes it to them here and wins by, you know, 20-ish points. I'd lay the 11 and a hook here with the Mustangs. We got uh, kind of a doubleheader. It is a doubleheader in college football. With the next matchup, 9 p.m. Eastern time, it's the Duke Blue Devils up against the Northwestern Wildcats. Minus two, that's Northwestern at home, 37 and a hook being the total. 
high IQ matchup here with Duke coming in. They struggled against Elon, against the Phoenix. It was a tough game. They Their offense did not look good at all. Their head coach, Manny Diaz, he's a defensive-minded guy. We'll see if he can turn it around offensively. I, I don't really see it happening, though, against the Northwestern team. This is this looks like a pretty strong bunch here under head coach David Braun, who's now 6-1 and one against the spread at home. Um, I'll also tell you, this was surprising doing research here. I forgot about this last year. Northwestern really came on uh, at the end of last year. They're actually on an 8-0 against the spread run. So one of the most profitable teams in college football coming in, if you kind of go back to last season, they're also on a 5-0 and straight up run which last year, that includes beating Utah in the bowl game. They won at Illinois in Champaign. They beat Purdue. They won uh, what they jump around Camp Randall. They beat Wisconsin as well. So this team has kind of handled business in their last five games, winning straight up and 8-0 against the spread. They've been kind of underrated in the betting markets. Hey, I like Northwestern here at home. They got revenge, actually five-time revenge. These two teams have, interestingly enough, played each of the last three seasons in the last five times they've played Duke has won. Hey, I don't think it happens this time, guys. I'd lay the two here with Northwestern at home in their kind of quasi new stadium right there on the lake. It's only seats like 15,000, but it's pretty cool right there on the water. Let's go Northwestern minus two in the nightcap in college football. Got three MLB picks coming your way here. Starting early, 2.20 Eastern time. In the morning on the Pacific Coast, it is the New York Yankees against the Chicago Cubs. Wicks going for the Cubbies. Luis Gill coming in at a minus 132 price tag going for the Bronx Bombers. Total of seven here in Wrigley Field. Yankees come in 20 games over 500. They're also 43 and 29 on the road. So they've been road warriors. They got the 26 year old Dominican born pitcher Gill on the hill. This is his first start off of the 15 day IL. Always a little bit tricky handicapping that, but his numbers look good. 3-4 ERA, 3-8 FIP. Uh, he's a guy that throws 96, 97 miles per hour. Not going too deep, but the numbers are solid. He's up against Wicks, the 25-year-old out of Kansas State. It's his second year in the show. He's a reliever slash starter. Numbers look solid as well. 3-8 ERA, 3-8 FIP. I just think we get the better offense in the Yankees. I know the Cubs have come on of late. They've been a hot, a, kind of a hot swinging team, but they just lost two of three against the Pirates, and they were on that six-game winning streak. So I think they got a, got a little bit of a bandwagon there, and they've dropped two straight or two of three against the Pirates. I think they come down to earth here. 32 cents on the Bronx Bombers. I think it's short. Let's start our Friday off with the Yankees, minus 132 over the Cubs. Heading to the ATL up next, Cobb County, Georgia. It's the Atlanta Braves hosting the Toronto Blue Jays. 7.20 Eastern start time. Kevin Gosman going for the Jays. Max Freed, the lefty, going for the Bravos. Minus 180. That's Atlanta as the home favorite. Seven in the hook being the total. Toronto comes in winning seven of the last nine times. Gosman has taken the hill. He's been hot. The 33-year-old out of LSU. Four ERA, sub four FIP on the season, but his last five starts, 2-2 two, two ERA. So uh, riding a hot right hand here with the Blue Jays starter. He's up against Max Freed, gave up two home runs, four walks last time out. That's always a little bit alarming. And he's got reverse home road splits, meaning he's actually better on the road. The thing here is he's pitching at home where the opponent's uh, on base percentage is 60 points higher for whatever reason in Cobb County. He's up against the Jays offense. It's a top five MLB offense over the last two weeks by weighted runs created plus. And the Braves have lost three of the last four times. Freed has taken the hill. All of that, guys, I mean, 80 cents on the Braves. That's a pretty heavy favorite. Hey, let's take a swing here with the Blue Jays, plus 155. Risk 100 to win 155 with the big dog. Toronto Blue Jays over the Atlanta Braves. Got one game left, guys. A reminder, if you could comment below, it helps out the algorithm. Anything is welcome. What you're looking to bet, where you agree, where you disagree. And if you can smash that like button, that helps helps out as well. If you're interested in premium picks, check them out. Wagertalk.com, college football, NFL, Major League Baseball, Drew Martin experts page there, wagertalk.com. Last game, we're heading to Houston, Texas for the Arizona Diamondbacks and Houston Astros. Framber Valdez, the lefty, on the hill for the Strohs. Brandon Fat going for the D-backs. Total of eight, Houston, minus 160, home favorites. 
This is a Houston Astros team that, yes, is 10 games over 500, but you got to remember these money line sports, betting baseball, they're minus seven units on the season. They just got swept against the Cincinnati Reds, losing three straight, losing four and a half units because they were the favorite in every game. Now we're asking them to lay minus 160 again. I don't know. I know the market loves Framber Valdez, just a 311 ERA. But when you look at his strength of schedule, I mean, it's not very daunting, you know, pitching in the NL West. He, he's pitched against a lot of like bottom 10 MLB lineups. When you look at the Orioles, even the Pirates hit him around a bit. So I think this Diamondbacks offense actually has a shot to put up some crooked numbers. And Brandon Fat, the starter here for the D-backs, his last time out, he had 10 strikeouts against the Dodgers. He's got 155 strikeouts on the season. Compare that to just 34 walks. That's a heck of a strikeout uh, walk ratio there. The 25-year-old has good numbers overall. The Diamondbacks just won two of three against the San Francisco Giants. And they're 40 and 31, nine games over 500 on the road. Talked about Houston being down seven units on the season. The Diamondbacks are up double-digit units, one of the more profitable teams to bet on in Major League Baseball, also the second-hottest lineup in MLB over the last two weeks. We get a plus-140 price tag on them, risk 100 to win 140. Another big dog barking on the Diamond. It's the Diamondbacks over the Astros. So in recap, guys, we got the D-backs over the Strohs. We got the Blue Jays over the Braves. Two big dogs there, plus-140 on Arizona plus 155 on Toronto in the first game up for Friday. We're on the Yankees minus 132 in NFL. We got the Green Bay Packers plus the two with the dog uh, there over over the Philadelphia Eagles. We got SMU minus 11 and a half over BYU and we got Northwestern minus two over Duke. So hit three sports here. Drew's Daily Diamond doing that for the first time this year. I know you guys always like a best bet. So we'll go with the Diamondbacks plus 140 for the best bet on Friday. I am Drew Martin checking out. I'll be back on Saturday, guys. Smash that like button, comment below, cash those tickets. Thanks for tuning in.